Hey guys. Hey guys. Look at this sense from the opening range highs last week. Look at it now. Up 44% from the opening range highs. That's an EP. That's uh, not a biotech related, but yeah, diagnostics and research. It's an EP on study data. This is called uh, small account edge. Those who have smaller accounts, these are the stocks to trade. High ADR, lower cap stocks. You caught that, you still have the position, that's great. Bunch of you have it. That's awesome. Very good. Yeah, BBW looks pretty good.
Wait, what? Is gold capping down but silver is capping up? Uh, why? Why is that? Can, can someone explain me why silver is capping up but gold is capping down? Apes are demanding delivery of silver. They did push it quite bit quite a bit last time. 20% almost in in 2 days. That's not bad. Oh, please, can, can we? Oh, so uh, gold is capping down and silver is capping up today because uh, silver has an industrial component to it. Thanks. Thanks. That's that's some great logic. I love logic. With that logic, shouldn't gold be down every day and silver be up every day? Yeah, silver can kill vampires, gold cannot. That's, um, yeah, legit, yeah. Sounds legit. That's true. Oh yeah, yeah, you can have silver bullets to kill werewolves, yep. Silver is shinier than gold, yeah. Is it? I have no idea. RHE looks like shit for now. So I'm still short AMC from two days ago and yesterday's ads. And I may add more if it loses that 42 area. And BB2, I may short more if it starts losing yesterday's lows. But they could very easily bounce also. AMC undercut the 10 day closed way off the lows at a little bit of a week and you know we'll see could very easily bounce back to high 40s and bb could also bounce back to high 14s very easily so we'll see if they close strong i'm, I'm not gonna hold them over the weekend 
If they go close like this, I'm gonna hold them over the weekend. And obviously if they close lower also, I'm gonna hold over the weekend. Unless they go down like 30% each, then I'll cover them. Um, I shorted some fast, low 117s yesterday. It's breaking this, trying to break this long uptrend. Right now it's gapping higher. Hopefully it doesn't stop me out. Yeah, BNTX, everything else is holding up really well. Just digesting their recent run-ups. I really wanted a gap done on the CLOV down to, I don't know, 12s, low 12s or something. Getting a slight gap up right now, but I hope it keeps selling today. I wanted a big meaner version play on it, but right now I don't think it's down enough to have a big bounce. Maybe it could, I don't know. Flagging. Um, looks decent on the weekly, on the daily, it's all over the place. Roblox found support on rising 20. Look at how it touched the 20 and then they bought it up into the range. That just shows strength. Leds or Eidos for Mina version? Uh, yeah, maybe, but they're both gapping up. That's a problem. Or at least Eidos is. Leds, I don't know. Ah, uh, maybe, yeah, they could bounce, I don't know. Not really five-star setups. MXL. Yeah. It's just another semiconductor name. There are many better ones. AMAT, LRCX, much better. They have lower ADRs, but, or you could just trade Soxel, triple semi ETF. I think that's the one best bang for the buck. OEG uh, looks broken for now. Yeah, this is more of a bottom bounce uh, setup. It had an episodic pivot yesterday. Just, you know, speculation, nothing really, no news. It's beaten down, it's built a base, you know, like small cap traders love, the, you know, these types of stocks and they can bounce and give you easily bounce back to 10, 12 bucks. But the entry was yesterday. When, when the volume came in. East. Could do a double in two, three days. Really? Yeah, sure. Why not? Maybe when it gets a better setup.
All right, guys. Good luck. Snapchat is trying to go. Steal um, It's about to break out of this little flag That should be good for my CLF Nvidia high tide flag Ah, it's me a little bit too short for the mega cap stock I think it's a bit too short. Raccoon small account edge. Um, oh, you entered here. 19 of April on this setup. Or what? Right, for now AMC getting rejected on the declining 10 EMA on the 60 minute. Same thing with BB, BB didn't even manage to touch it.
tech is up on this uh, steel strength mt x yeah a lot of steel names in my scans Doku is having follow through from the EP. Oh, think or swim is down completely. What a disaster. Yeah, Snapchat is uh, trying to go. But is it a great setup? I don't know. I mean, no, I guess it would have been better if it had a tight day before. I don't know. No one could be a potential EP. I generally think these biotech EPs are kind of difficult, but it does look good. It's kind of a neglected stock and now it's capping up a huge volume. Already traded more than its float. Or no, it's traded, almost traded its float. FCX copper name, kind of strong. Someone wicked snap. Fake news.
Yeah, Shopify is trying. Oh, Playboy losing. Oh, no. Must be Citadel on it. I think Kenny Boy is on it. Kenny Boy's incel? Yeah. Yeah, that would explain a lot. So ORPH is almost up 40% since the opening. Okay. <laughs> Volatility on this thing. AMC taking out lows for the day. CLOV near the lows for the day. Well, uh, 24 hours, the YOLO stocks dot live shows other data than swaggy stocks. Oh, ORPH is a, uh, a Danish company and it's based in Copenhagen, Switzerland. Okay, good to know. The Danes sure as hell know how to run their stocks. Up 1200% in one. No, sorry, the Swiss, I mean. Oh, so people in Switzerland are called Danes? I didn't know that. You learn something new every day. You don't trust Asian companies? Yeah, me neither. This BBIG, if it can go sideways another day or two, that would be great. It's kind of building a high tide flag here. Is SLV having um 
fake breakout again. Needs to break out and then just, you know, go. This teasing needs to stop. BB, yeah, it sure as hell doesn't look very good. Looks weak. Loses the 10 day. Next stop would be the 20 day, which is like 16% lower. And AMC has another. 26% to go. Maybe I should have added to AMC instead. Oh, whatever. Sig, uh, but it hasn't gone yet. What, what do you mean it was a small account edge? It hasn't gone yet. For the EP buyers, it was very close stopping out yesterday, but it didn't because it never took out the lows of the day. But it was close 65, 18, yeah, it was like 15, 20 cents away, but it's holding. Look at the volume it had yesterday. That's like what, 10 times? No, not 10 times. Almost 10 times average volume. Yeah, 10 times average volume. Not bad. Noven has almost traded twice the float now. Well, actually, it has traded twice the float. But it already took out the opening range lows. Yeah, that's what I've been talking about on CLOV since yesterday. I, I want that real mean aversion trade. I want that five star trade. I don't want something in, you know, two or three star. I want five stars. VXRT coming out of a range. Biotechs have been waking up lately too since BIIB data.
The LPN looks like a failed micro cap pump. These EV names are holding up really well. Except for Tesla, which looks like shit. Also this Palantir is setting up, I really like this one. A few more days, so the 20 they can catch up. Looks like it's finally ready to go on both on the daily and the weekly. I'm gonna start watching it. Is there a correlation of stock price and the successful trade of a good setup? And if so, which one? Uh, I don't understand the question. Stock price makes no difference. Focus on the setup. ECTC, uh, is it a good setup? Let's look. Made a big, nice linear move up almost 50% in a couple of weeks, and now it's been digesting the move. It's very orderly and controlled. Yes, it's a good setup. And this st stock has pr proven previously it can run. Even though the EDR is slightly below 5, this thing can go because it, you know, previously this thing was up 175% in a couple of weeks. So. That's always a good sign when you, you know, when a stock has made a big move previously. Then you know it can run. Versus all the other random stocks out there. You want to be in the fastest ones. Not the losers. Noven, nice. Man, maybe I should have bought it myself. Almost triple uh, float traded now. Now AFRM is one of these uh, bottom flag setups. Not the most explosive one, but it's made a nice move off the lows. About 40% in a few weeks. Pulled back a little bit, found support on the 10 day, and now it's kind of trying to break this flag. Not really a great flag. I would have preferred a few more days of sideways so, and tightness and the 20 day to catch up, but... Over the past few weeks, these setups have worked pretty well. Over the past two weeks or so. Oh yeah, CLOV. Oh man, I hope this thing closes week. And then we get a gap down on Monday, like 12 or even sub 12. Could have a decent mean reversion trade setting up.
looking forward to it. If you're in a plateau, well, do more of what works and do less of what doesn't work. And especially if you're not profitable yet. Cut away the shit that doesn't work and do more of what works. And rinse and repeat and boom, you'll be profitable in no time. Easy peasy. CLF looking good. Yeah, it looked good like three days ago when it broke out. That was the entry. The entry was below 2150. And now it's gone. GoPro, it's breaking out. You mean it broke out three days ago? That that's what you mean when you say it's breaking out, right? Dun, dun, dun. Oh man, this SMH. I think there's some big trades coming in this uh, semiconductor sector. They're really setting up. Not many high ADR stocks in that sector though. So that's why I'm playing uh, with Soxel. Yeah, commodity stocks are more generally more re mean rewarding than growth stocks and you know like other sectors. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, what if NOVN goes to like 25 today? Almost four times float soon. Not bad.
this TGLS looks great. Wow, looks beautiful. ADR 8.6. Beautiful setup. Wait, what? Futu is setting up too. I think it may, it's gonna make a big move. It's so it's so coiled. Oh my god, looks great on the weekly, on the daily. Needs a few more days. It's gonna make a big move. Wow! It, once it breaks out of this base, it's gonna double. I have no doubt in my mind. No doubt in my mind. I don't know. AMPY looks very choppy. I, I don't know if it's a good setup. I don't think it's a great setup. Doesn't look very explosive. You will see, yeah, it's building a longer, longer uh, base. Let's go, snap, snap, build, chap. How to put ADR? Very easy. You right click here and you click Edit Toolbar. SIFY, um, not really, looks like shit, I don't know, it's up today, I don't know. Maybe it has some news, not sure. DDD, um, yeah, it is flagging nicely. It's actually a pretty decent, yeah, it's it's building a decent flag. Hopefully, a like, couple more days. <laughs> P 
Princess of Yen. Yeah, thanks for the recommendation. I'm gonna watch it when I have time. Princess of the Yen. AMBA. Uh, very good. I, I don't know about very good, but... I mean, I guess it looks okay, but it's a slower ADR stock, so that's the problem. <sighs> raccoon, what's that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Raccoon had a great setup here. That's why I, I, I was asking if he was long from here. That's a, that's a five star. I mean, this is like, oh, I mean, this is five star. You can't get better than that. Looks similar to LEDs. Very similar to LEDs. Right? Very similar. These are five star setups. You can hone in on those. Especially on these micro small cap names. They can double, triple in a short amount of time. Even quadruple. You know, you're gonna get to your first million, you know, very quickly. Mox C, um, yeah, three days ago here was a good entry here. Didn't have much choose yet, but yeah, it was it had a good setup here. Real, it was a beautiful setup. Four and a half stars. Uxin. Yeah, down here it was a very good setup here. May May 18th. Since then it hasn't had any setups. You still in it? That's great. Yeah, it's been surfing the 10 day the whole way. This is why you you know sell partial with the three to five days and then you trail the rest with the 10 day. Veil looks good. Uh, yeah, it looks good, but what's the ADR on it? Yeah, some of these um, are easy to see on the one hour chart, like especially this uh, IHT that had initial breakout but failed, but it did have another breakout here in the low nines. You couldn't really see it on the daily, but you clearly saw it on the 60 minute. But LEDs and the other ones, 
they were very clear on the daily chart. How, how can you say LEDs was not obvious on the daily chart? I, I, I don't know what you are smoking, but this was super obvious. You don't need intraday charts for to find LEDs or this other one, MOXC. You don't need intraday charts. Sometimes they can be useful though. Wait, did someone delete the comment? Oh, never mind. There it is. Uh, EOLS. Um, I mean, I guess it looks decent. It's probably too late to buy it now. It's already gone, but yeah, it's decent. It made a nice move. 40%. Surfed the 10 day, tightened up, and now it's kind of trying to go again. I, I don't know, it's not super explosive, but I mean, it can go, I guess. Isn't this the Botox uh, competitor? Or, or EpiPen competitor? I don't remember which one. Wait, let's see here. I remember I was shorting it here back in 2018. Five star short setup. Yeah, this is uh, like a Botox competitor cream, wrinkle cream. If you want to get rid of wrinkles, buy a EOLS stock. <laughs> or buy the product, I don't know. Maybe it helps, maybe it doesn't. <laughs> Roku um, needs a lot of work to do. Uh, I, I it needs it needs some work. EGLE, uh, it's too choppy. Needs to tighten up. It had a decent setup here. Now it's all over the place. Rida, I think it needs to go sideways a bit. Had a big, big move. And it's surfing the 10 day beautifully, but I think it needs to uh, go sideways here at least three, four more days, I think. Pierce had a setup two days ago. Pen looks like shit. It's a lot of work. Looks better on the weekly. But uh, on the daily, it looks like absolute shit. Lemonade. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, come on, come on, guys. L let's all post the things that are like at least a week away from having a setup, like something like lemonade. Like it, it needs to go sideways for a long, I'm not for a long, but at least a week. Like there's not going to be a remotely a setup here in the next couple of days. I do like this Beyond Meat though. This thing is still building a flag. And it looks ready. Hopefully it can close like this. It would be a 5 star setup. Or maybe not 5 star, but 4 star. Look, it looks like a very powerful 
flag here. I made a big move. Now it's been going sideways and tightening up. Yeah, but Celsius had a time limit to it, so it's, it's not valid anyways. It had to go to 100 before the next earnings report, and that was like two earnings reports ago. And CTY, uh, I think it needs to go sideways a bit more, a few more days. Okay, FA, yes, follow through selling. Couldn't reclaim the 10 EMA, got f failed at the 10 EMA. LKCO, that's old LK, right? I'm sorry, what? Starting to look really good? What, what do you mean? It, it's up two days in a row. It was decent, like... What do you mean, starting to look good? This thing is not close to... It's, it's not remotely being a setup here. It's just randomly up two days in a row. Let's focus on things that actually look like setups where you're gonna make money that are no more than a few days away from being something actionable. That's what we're here for. We're not here to look at hundreds of random stocks, we're here to find setups with an edge so we can make money that's our sole reason to be here dun, 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 dun. MDG8, yeah, looks pretty decent. Very thin, super thin stock. But those of you with tiny accounts, you know, these things can be really nice. It's pretty much a five star setup. Look at this. Looks pretty decent. <laughs> yeah, Tesla, there's a trade coming, but uh, unsure at what direction yet. Uh, it it does it hasn't followed the strength of the other ones the NIO uh, LI XPEV etc. These things have all gone up like fifty percent in the past two three weeks, fifty seventy percent even, eighty percent, and the NIO forty percent and Tesla hasn't rallied at all. So my bet is gonna take a leg lower. That's my bet.
but still inside of the range, so kind of useless making predictions, kind of useless exercise. PRPO, oh, I don't see anything here. Yeah, the biggest drawdowns always happen after great runs, and that's how it should be. If you don't have a drawdown, means you're taking no risk, means you're making no money. Like if, if you, you know, if you have a, a set of rules and you double your account and your drawdowns double in size, that's a feature, not a bug. That's how it should be. Revolutionary, right? E-man. Um, yeah, looks okay. Looks decent, yeah. Yeah, stem needs a few more days. Yeah, Ford is the new momentum car stock. That's true. That's a leading, <laughs> leading car stock. Oh my God, NOVM. What if it actually goes to 25 today? BB taking out lows. I hope some of you got it. I, you know, for me it was just too, uh, too illiquid. But, you know, this was like perfect also. And also look at what it did. It gapped above this moving average. So many people they call out these uh, EPs. They gap up, hit some declining moving average, and then they fail. This is very important. It actually gapped over that moving average, tested it, held it, and took out opening range highs. And you had this enormous volume out of the gate. By the time the opening range highs triggered, this thing had already traded like, uh, I mean, more than the average daily volume, 10 times the average daily volume. Neglected stock. I don't know anything about the news. Is it significant? Is it not? Is it just, you know, clueless wall street bet guys buying it i have no idea but you know the volume tells the story doesn't even you know mean anything if the news are significant but if it gaps up volume is big and takes out opening range highs you better pay attention and it's a low float Yeah, but the markets trend only a third of the time, but even if the markets go sideways, there can be individual stocks that make big moves. Come on, snap. Let's get to 67 today.
Come on, snappy boy. Similar to any? Uh, I don't know. Well, they both were neglected. Had big volume right out of the gate. After reviewing your historical performance, I don't know where you got my historical performance from, but if you if you uh, if you paid attention, my longest drawdown was in 2015. It lasted nine months. I have a drawdowns that last three to six months every single year. It's a feature, not a bug. Me reviewing my performance? Well, he was uh, studying me reviewing my performance. He would know I had a nine month drawdown in 2015. And that I have three to six month drawdowns every single year. So this is nothing out of the ordinary. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, CLOV, is it bouncing now? Hmm. Uh, didn't I just talk about it? I don't even remember. Uh, yeah, I guess it's setting up. Let's. Yeah, what goes up comes down. If you think about it, the morons who chased it at you know 10, 50, 11 after I mentioned it on the stream. They made almost 200%. <laughs> and now they're thinking, hey, this guy on Twitch, he doesn't know anything. You can chase and still make great money. What a fucking moron. If I'd followed his advice and not bought, I would have missed a 200% uh, winner. <laughs> EMC, very tight range. I really hope it breaks at 42 later and goes to 32 today. <laughs> Look, you just can't help some people, you know, at the end of the day, it's experience that uh, teaches. I know people too just randomly buy stocks that are hot. They hear, he, hear about it somewhere and then they buy it when it's up like 1000% in a week. Hey, have a great weekend, Stock Daddy. Uh, on regular breakouts, I don't wait for volume. If it breaks, you buy it. And if you if it has enough average daily volume, you don't have to worry about volume. On EPs, volume is key. You want to see big, big volume, either in pre-market, or if it doesn't have a lot of volume pre-market, you know, just in the first minute or you know, the first few minutes after open.
raccoon why stocks fall sometimes well because this is this stock was up 1500% in 6 months and uh, I have to check the news it's down almost 60% from highs to lows yeah this happens all the time in micro cap land this is nothing out of the um, but apparently you know let's see what's the news so they signed some contracts with China with a China company people I, th I guess thought it was good news and uh, then I guess profit taking came in because you know this thing is up 1500% in six months or maybe it wasn't good news yeah big rollover <laughs> But even if you for some reason bought this thing today, you would be fine because you would have gotten stopped out here in the 1540s, 1530s, 1520s. It's great where a few rules can uh, help you. Yeah, TIRX went down <laughs> 86, 87% in one day. Not bad. And what's even more, f what's even funnier is it's since the lows of this day, it's down another 40%. <laughs> Quality business, guys. Yeah, and th these types of things, they happen all the time in micro cap land. But look at the move it made from here. When it went from 12 to over 100, 700% in, uh, in a month. Yeah, I know. I paid attention to what Livermore talks a lot about, uh, about, a lot about this, you know, when people ask him for stock advice. He, he never gives them advice. It's the same thing we see on the stream all the time. People just want handouts. They don't want, you know, they just want to make a quick buck. And even if you give them some good stock advice, they still won't be any wiser. They don't know when to sell, right? I just, you know, when people ask me about the market, I just say, you know, buy index funds and do it for f the rest of your life. And you, you're going to outperform 99% uh, of Wall Street over the long term. An exit strategy. That's when you go to the bathroom. That's an exit strategy. Eighties, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, looks pretty decent. RRD doesn't look any good. Had a good setup here. Well, even I've even marked this triangle. Or I even, you know, drew this triangle. <laughs> SPLP, uh, holy shit, this thing has made an enormous move. Oh, never mind, it's not as big as I thought. Uh, I don't know, this thing trades weird. 
Look at this breakout here, though. I don't know why it trades. It trades super weird. Damn it! CLOV! Oh. Well. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's a li read this first or fuck off. That's a Livermore quote. Ship. Uh, I don't see anything here. Um, <laughs> man, this Shopify is so coiled. Oh my god. Amazon too, man. This thing. Look, look at how it found support in rising fifty weekly. Uh, Netflix is, looks a bit sloppy. Apple looks good. You know, it's been building higher lows for a long time. I mean, it's hard to get bearish in the market when, you know, things look like this. Netflix needs more work. What more are Microsoft? Yeah, Microsoft has been strong for a while. Look at the move. What a move. Bull market, baby. And imagine if you had listened to all these stupid bear accounts and all these stupid bears on uh, CNBC calling for the next big crash and end of the world and blah, blah, blah. And look at how many stocks have made these types of moves. L look at this, right? So many useless people. There's so many useless people out there. There really are. Yeah, haven't you heard about hyperinflation for like 10 years now? BHC. Yeah, it's true. Fair sells. That's true. And bearish arguments always si sound uh, smarter too. Like the bullish argument is always this. Look, shit is gonna be happen. It always happened. There's always gonna be shit in, you know, along the way. But in the long term, we're gonna, it's just gonna be fine. It doesn't sound as smart as, you know, putting up a... A randomly cherry-picked uh, chart of the US uh, uh, I don't know the 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 depth stuff <laughs> and also if we're gonna get hyperinflation Trust me, it's gonna show up. 
gold and silver they're gonna make enormous moves probably bitcoin and you know a lot of the cryptos too there's gonna be a serious flight of capital into uh you know those types of assets There's going to be an enormous opportunities. And yet none of the bears predicted the COVID crash. <laughs> They've been pretty predicting all types of cr crashes, but when we finally get a crash, they miss it. What a bunch of useless idiots. Like, it's like, hey, I, I won't leave my house today because there might be a storm. That's the same logic, yeah. There's always going to be crashes. There's always going to be big storms doing a lot of damage. Doesn't mean you can't enjoy life in the meantime, right? Hey guys, none of you are going to make it, including me, pro tip. I know, right? Yeah, the markets are always the best leading indicators. If you pay attention to what's going on. Well, I have no problem trading biotech stocks. It's just biotechs have been a kind of a dead sector over the past few years. I mean, between 2010, 2015, biotechs were really hot. And they're, you know, just look at the biotech indices. I mean, they made a big bit of a move last year, like XBI and IBB, which is a larger cap. But there were so many other opportunities. So I didn't trade a lot of biotech stocks anyways. Except for some of these vaccine names that went crazy. Uh, but there just hasn't been a lot of opportunity in the biotech sector. If you look at some of the biotech stocks, like even if you look at the larger cap likes BIIB, made a huge move from 2010 to 2015. And since then, nothing. Uh, Gilead, same thing. Big move from 2012 to 2015. Since then, nothing. Uh... What more are there? MYL. M Wait, Milan is not in the mark. Did they get bought out? Wait, what's. Um, let's see. No. Um, oh, yeah. Um, biotech. Technology. Let's look at the dollar volume. Noven is the biotech stock with the highest dollar volume today. And it's a micro cap stock. How funny. Yeah, Vertex. This was kind of a choppy one, never mind. 
it's Amgen. Well, no, this was never a good trading stock. Regan, that's the one. This made a big move also, 2010 to 2015. Huge move. Uh, what other ones are there? There's just not that many liquid biotech stocks around. Even the large cap ones are not super liquid. Jazz from 2009 to 2015, it went up 22,000%. Bear markets create such opportunities, it's insane. Snap what? Oh, come on! Classic. It's gonna do exactly what SC did. It's gonna shake us out and then it's gonna go. It's gonna yeah, just watch and learn, guys. Yeah, classic. Drew really is a classic, man. Is, 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 is uh, Kenny Boy on Snap now? Fucking Kenny Boy. Kenny Boy wants us to go broke. So he, he can be even richer. He, 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 he won't give uh, us small guys any chance. That's how ruthless he is. Let's see. Kenny Boy Net Worth. Oh, sorry. His real name is Ken Griff. Ken Griffin. Six. Oh, he he's down a hundred million since a few days ago. Yeah. Kenny, Bo Kenny boy uh, pushed the short button right now. Sitting in his glass tower. Making us go broke. That's, that's some evil right there. Uh, he's not even in this secret uh, evil short discord. He's doing his own thing. He's a rogue. He's not a team player. <laughs> I hope you're not serious thinking this is some day trader shorting resistance. First of all, what what resistance? And second, yeah, it's the secret Discord room. They they started shorting here and they shorted all the way down here. Uh all the trade day traders they um uh, teamed up mm -hmm. AMC. I think if it takes out ties for the day, I'm gonna cover um, significant portion of it. This thing would be easy to run back to fifty bucks.
What's Chloe doing? Oh, mm hmm. GME. GME is now fading, though. You know what, if BB holds here and maybe closes, you know, near the highs of the day or it takes out highs, it could be a long setup for next week. Doesn't look bad. Try to break below the 65 EMA twice now or the 10, uh, 10 day moving average and it couldn't do it. It builds a tight candle here. Oh, could be interesting. NCMI, uh, avoid it. There's no momentum here. You need to be in momentum stocks. This is this is not a powerful flag. It's up 16%. No, no, no. Nope, nope, nope. Nope, nope. Nope. GTBIF. Yeah, it looks great on the weekly. Yep. Does look great on the weekly. VXRT. Yeah. I had some news, I guess. Um. Well, it needs a few, it needs at least three four days to tighten up from this candle. At least three four days. I, dude, one Spanish Harlem. I, I I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. I'm I'm pretty sure you don't either. What do you mean the excess highs? Like what does that even mean? <laughs> it's a day trader's fault. The day trader shorted this thing. And that's why it's uh, having some down ticks. I mean, just just stop it. Hey hey, what was it? SC was it the same thing that happened to us a few days ago on SC? Did the day trader short the excess highs? Was it that's why it stopped stopped us out? <laughs> yeah, now it's gonna go to three fifty. The day trader is. Uh, they wicked us out of it. Man, the, the logic some people use, like the logic someone used what, when I asked where gold was gapping down and silver was gapping up because silver in, is an industrial metal. 
or it's also used in industrial like an industrial metal great logic oh man 10 it needs more days it needs to go sideways Hey, was it was it uh, investors live who 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 shorted Snap down? <laughs> when you say day traders, was it him? They usually get all the blame. What was what, was it them also? <laughs> oh man. The evil shorties. Yeah, it was Warrior with one R. Excess high is a common term in futures trading. Is it a useful thing or is it just uh, a term used by uh, useless traders? There's a lot of terms in uh, the financial markets and most of them are just, you know, used by a bunch of useless people who can't make any money. But they sure as hell like to sound smart. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Like I said before, successful trading, it's its more about, you know, cutting away all the useless things you ever learned and heard. Because most of it, most of the, most of the things people learn about the financial market is useless, totally useless. If you, if you can unlearn those things, you're on the right path. And the more, more useless things you can unlearn, you know, you can you can become incredibly wealthy. FT seventy one. How many hundreds of millions have him has he made? Look, if you show me a trader that's incredibly successful and he uses some really stupid like term for something, but it, that something actually works, look, I'll embrace it with both hands. Yeah, exactly. You yeah, exactly. You you listen to these guys: Drucker Miller, Paul, Te uh, sorry, David Tepper, Paul Tudor Jones, 
and they almost never use any of these stupid, uh, you know, phrases. And these guys are legit, you know, they, you know, they have great track records for long term. They're filthy rich. So who do you want to emulate your trading after? Some random schmuck on social media who probably, you know, you know, trades a $500 account, uses all these fancy words. And, you know, maybe also selling a service or, you know, these legit people. Guys, the day traders got us. They got us. They SC'd us. And, and you know what's gonna happen? Watch and see. It's gonna do. It's gonna find support on the 20 EMA. Just like SC did. And, and then it's gonna reclaim and it's gonna be at 70 next week. Damn, I had a pretty damn decent position. I had a huge position. Oh. Taking a nice loss on it. Oh, lovely. Damn, day traders. Maybe I should have sold my position on the excess highs. Exactly, you can't sell simple things. People want complexity. Because people many times don't believe that simple is the best uh, answer. And you see it, you know, like I read about, you know, people in different sectors and business and it's really the same thing over and over again. Hey, can someone tell me when the day traders are gonna start buying Snap again? When ex when are the excess lows? I wanna know. I wanna be on the secret. Have a great weekend. I know. <laughs> oh. Because people say so many random things and you know, I, I gotta capitalize on it. <laughs> Damn day traders. It's always the shorts, the algos, the day traders. It's always someone's fault. It's never the fact that sometimes... Guys, if there are kids listening to this, cover their ears. Sometimes stock have, stocks have down ticks. Did you hear that? Yeah, David, you got that that joke. Well, I, it wasn't a joke. It's actually truth. <laughs> it's actually the truth. It's literally the truth. Sometimes stocks go down. And once you embrace the fact, instead of always looking for, you know, reasons for random moves, unless it's something like really... Uh, uh, something special you know like something is cap capping up 50 percent obviously you're gonna start looking for news you know because that's obviously something 
there's something pushing it, right? But you know, failed breakouts, it's a thing. Most breakouts I buy fail. Most breakouts I buy fail. Most relationships you get into fail. Hey, Mogor, Mogsar, maybe because you have too small candle. Maybe your candle is too small. <laughs> what? Think about that. TTLS, uh, yeah, uh, this is the one we looked at before. Yeah, it's still a good setup, but now it's, you know, it's gone. Hmm. Watch this thing go to 70 next week. Oh man, SC, I can't look at it. And net two, that one I passed on. And this is the one that worked the best. Oh, why, why does the stocks I pass on just go straight up like Roblox? Okay, actually CLF did go straight up. And AMC went straight up too, together with BB when I bought them last week. Okay, never mind. I, I, I do actually catch some really big ones. And BNTX uh, took a few days, but it's been straight up since. And BRCU went straight up when I, after I bought it. And Soxel went straight up after I bought it initially. Never mind, never mind. I actually can And NRGU went straight up. And REMX went straight up. Okay. TNA didn't go straight up. I got stopped out first, and then I got shaken out of half size. That one hurts. Sophie, uh, it needs more time sideways. It doesn't matter. A flag pole, it can be a few days, it can be a few weeks. It doesn't matter. It needs to be an explosive linear move, orderly pullback. You want to see some support on the 10, 20 day moving averages. The mi micro cap, smaller caps, they will generally find support on a 10. The mid, mid smart, larger cap will generally find support on a 20. If you were in CLF, price target, I am in CLF. Price target to the moon. Uh, what's better, having uh, I'll, I'll I'll wait two minutes. <laughs> I'll wait two minutes. Yeah, I think you pushed enter too fast. To have or not to have.
Man, I want to catch some. Like, like guys, like the only reason I still trade, like, is because you know it trades like AMC and BB last week. When you catch something that goes up like ninety percent after your entry, now I had tiny size. I'm still kicking for myself for not adding when I should have. I mean, those are the trades you live for. Like, I mean, and BB went up like fifty four percent after entry. I mean. Those are the trades I live for. That's the only reason I still trade. Otherwise, I would have put all my money in like, I don't know, some kind of a balanced portfolio. And just, you know, done something else with my life. Like, I, I want the big ones. The big winners. So satisfying. It's like a treasure hunt. It's like, it's just a, such a fun feeling when you catch something. And especially if you catch something on a big size. Size matters. It really does. Oh, Jim Dalton. So excess highs is actually used uh, by a successful trade, successful trader. Oh, but he's uh, what? He's selling books. He's selling a service. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And he's in his sixties. So why? Why is if he's so good? Why isn't like a billionaire or something? Is he a billionaire? Like this guy has so many years under his belt. He should be so fucking rich and he's selling courses. Yeah. Yeah, you know, look. Look, I I I I no, no. Just no. <laughs> so what's his net worth? And where he where is his track record? At least Minervini has won the U.S. Investing Championships, and he's right. I think he's leading. He's right. In, he's he's uh, leading right now. What well, what's this guy's track record? Other than he has a website and he's wearing a shirt. Man, there's so many snake oil salesmen out there, man. Oh, uh, and you know, people don't know better. They they want hand holding. And it's hard if you're a beginner. It's super hard to know who's legit and who's not. I had that problem a long time, and then as I realized, like I followed a lot of people, and you know, many people just went quiet after a while because they blew up. And I remember once there was this guy, I really thought, you know, he was a big time trader because he had some, you know, some really great uh, trade ideas. And then he like talked about this, you know, his what, a specific trade. He had like 50 shares or something or 500 shares. And I was in the same trade with 50,000 shares. I'm like. I'm a fucking schmuck and this guy is trading a hundred on my size. I unfollowed it, him. Like I, I literally went to Twitter and unfo unfollowed him right there and then. I don't remember. It, that was like five, six years ago. 
and back then I had a tiny account and I, I traded like a hundred times more size than he did. So just to give some perspective and, and now my account is like hundred times larger. So I guess my size now is 10,000 times his, his size. <laughs> I mean, there's so many m mediocre people on social media and some of them actually have some good ideas. That's the thing. But they can still be really, really shitty traders, which is amazing. I can't, I, I, I don't, I don't understand. How can you have good trading ideas and be such a, you know, bad trader? Because once you become good at trading, you, you, you can grow your account so fucking fast. You won't believe how fast you can grow your accounts. Especially if you figure out how to scale your trading, which is no problem if you focus on swing trading. You know, you can reach, you know, 10 million so quickly once you figure trading out. Yeah, absolutely. Doesn't matter. Good markets, bad markets. The markets are good most of the time. That's not an excuse. But they're not like obviously last year that was like an anomaly. That, they were ex exceptionally good. So that was definitely an, an anomaly. What resource would you recommend if you want to scale up your trading? The best source is you just do bigger size. You grab your balls and you do bigger size. That's the only way. You have to force yourself out of your comfort zone. And I'm not talking about you oh, double your size overnight. No, increase your size by 10%. Increase your risk by 10%. Right? As your account grows, you should increase your risk. But it shouldn't in, in, in dollar terms, but not in percentage terms. Always think in percentage terms. If you double your account, eventually your, your risk should double too, like in dollar terms. Exactly. Do you know why a lot of great traders trade the same setups? Because they work and they have for a hundred plus years. Livermore traded the same setups. Very similarly. Now obviously different mar uh, setups work in different market conditions. Like you can, you're, you're not gonna get you know high tight flags in a bear market. You're gonna get a lot of bear flags that have a lot of follow through. You live in Livermore. Exactly. How, how did I? Because he had a tiny account because he didn't know how to trade. He didn't know how to trade his own ideas. Or he had shitty trade uh, risk management. I don't know. How could his account be so small?
Ja. Yeah. Yep, Snapchat. Shook us out, found support. Undercut the 10 EMA. You know, it's still holding up trends. Just like SC. Uh, SC did go to a 20. But uh, yeah, it slightly undercut it, found support, held the uptrend, and um, here we are. <laughs> Those damn day traders. Why, wait, was this the excess lows? Why didn't someone alert me? Come on. The day traders got us. I wonder if Ken Kenny Boy was involved or if it was the hundred lot traders. No matter, they got us. Oh man, I didn't realize it was this late. Um, did not realize it's this late. I guess I'll... Uh, BB is showing such relative weakness to all the others like GME. Oh, GME actually faded all its uh, strength. Okay, interesting. And what's CLOV doing? Uh, this one is still strong. And AMC is kind of middle of the range, kind of building higher lows on the 60 minute. It's been building higher lows for three candles now, so I don't know. But yeah, if it takes out the yes or the highs, I'll, I'll cover it probably. I'm not going to hold it over the weekend. It could very easily go back to 50. MRNA, yeah, that's a beautiful flag. I, I set an alert on it. If you can go sideways another three, four, five days, could be nice. BNTX is also flagging. Another three, four days, you know, look, there could be an ad spot here. I'm probably not gonna add because I already have a decent position relative to the average volume of this stock. But it's acting well, really well. TMCI, what's this? Uh, yeah, 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 sure, yeah. Noven. Uh, Noven. What do you mean it's giving back? It's uh, it's it's kind of mid range. It had a big big move. I mean, uh, I mean this thing literally went up twenty three percent very shortly after the opening range highs. Seasonality. Um, well, there is a seasonality in the market. May to October is generally kind of way, way worse than uh, October to April. Like almost all the market gains over the past 50 years, they've come from like May to, sorry, October, uh, yeah, October to April, I think. But, you know, that's like on average. Doesn't mean you can't have you know, great summers. I mean, just go go look at the Nasdaq the past, you know, five, six years. You'll see many of just in the few recent years, the summers were great. Like last year, last summer was insane. If you followed some stupid seasonality, like I, I, got, I probably doubled my account last summer, if not more. Look at what it did from June to August. There were some insane opportunities. Tesla. I was all over this Tesla. Three times I bought these breakouts. In hindsight, not an enough size. You know, that was last summer. Now, the summer before 2019, that was very choppy. It was all over the place. It reminds me of like February to May this year. It was up, down, up, down. 
summer 2018 was pretty good too. Like there was a lot of opportunities. Summer 2017, uh, I don't remember what I traded. The indices weren't that great, but uh, I don't remember individual opportunities. But also, you know, even if the indices go sideways, there, there can be individual, like, big opportunities under the hood. You gotta follow the, gotta follow the setups. Dun, dun, da, dun, 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 dun. Uh, fuck off, David. Have a great weekend and fuck off, David. <laughs> David thinks I'm talking too much. Peloton, uh, yeah, it's more of a, yeah, uh, I'm not a fan of these types of setups that are below the moving averages. Now, obviously, they can work, and a lot of them have worked well over the past few weeks, but these tend to not, you know, they can be tricky. I, I've never been good at these, never. But what gets me going are setups like these. <sighs> Man. Futu. The 20 day, it's gonna catch up in the next few days. What's Tiger doing? Tiger is not as tight. Tiger had this great DP a couple of weeks ago. I didn't buy it because it was too illiquid, but if it if the average volume on this thing was higher, maybe 30, 40 million shares, I would have been all over this thing. And also look, it didn't close super strong. You see, you see, you're like, oh, what a disappointing close, right? But it doesn't matter, right? It had it had a few down ticks. It it was probably the, some uh, day traders sh shorting it of the excess highs, and then found support on the sixty on the ten EMA on the sixty, and it's been straight up since. You won. Yeah, man, this. Oh, those of you who bought it, I think there was one guy who bought it here. And this is the reason you trail it. You don't know, this thing could go to 40. Like, this thing made a huge move last summer. 2400% in literally a few days. So this thing has, you know, we know this thing can go. And, you know, you, you catch, you know, something like this, you, you know, maybe on... Uh, 25% of your account, let's say you put 25% of your account in something like this, right? And it, you know, it doubles, triples, you know, do the math. You only need a, f even if all your other trades break even, you only need a few of those types of trades and you're gonna double your account in a year. And that's assuming all your other trades you make break even. You catch one of these per quarter on 25, percent of your account size you know where you double or where you you know make like uh, that then doubles or triples and you increase your account by 20 or 30 percent in one home run trade you need one per quarter and you have doubled your account in a year And you have officially outperformed 99% of all market participants. Well, if you make 25% four times in a row on your account, you have doubled your account. You don't need to go all in, you know, Focus on high ADR stocks, stocks that make explosive moves. No need to trade. Uh, uh, has anyone mentioned like a super low ADR stock? Yeah. Uh, uh, what was it? Te no, not tech. Um, the, uh, it's um, wait, wait, wait. Um, uh, it's a steel name. Uh, Vale, Vale. Yeah. You know, you're not gonna get moves like that on a something like this. Uh, 
Uh, can I make a blog post a big excess size? Sure. Uh, I'm, I don't know what it is, but I'll make a blog post about it. I'm gonna put on a shirt. I'm gonna use a lot of fancy words. And I'm gonna attach a subscription service for 99 bucks per month. And you guys can learn. I'm such a philanthropist. Hey guys, I can teach you about any terms. And also, with a subscription service, and if I wear a, wear a shirt, you're, you're also gonna learn better. Trust me on that one. Look, look, if someone says something really stupid, I, I kind of got to, you know, I got to capitalize on that. Because th that's how you become a successful trader. You, 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 you cut out the stupid stuff. Or, well, that's part of it. Obviously, you got to do, you, you got to learn the things that work, but... You know, once you get the stupidity out of your system, there's the sky is the limit. Actually, the moon is the limit. There's so many ridiculous things being... And even some of the traders like I follow that have post good ideas, but I kind of know they're mediocre traders. And, you know, they, you know, some of them, you know, keep saying this, you know, just weird, weird things. But I'd still follow them because they have some really good, uh, like, they quick with news and stuff like that. Guys, when I'm closer to the mic... You learn faster. You've been you've traded futures over ten years, and you found uh, this Dalton guy stuff to be complete garbage. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Because if he was this, the guy is in his sixties, and it said on his web page he's been trading for forty years. Now, if he was that good, like if I can go to from five thousand to to like eighty million in ten years, that guy should be a fucking billionaire if he's that good, or at least worth a few hundred million. There, there wouldn't be a need to you know serve sell some service. It's just so. Stupid man, it's ridiculous. The fact is, he's probably never made any money trading, or he's made very little, so he needs to uh, substitute his income. He needs cash flow, right? <laughs> That's the fact. You don't see Drucken Miller. Or Soros or David Tepper or, uh, you know, Paul Tudor Jones or Warren Buffett have, a, you know, subscription services where you use a bunch of uh, useless fancy words, right? Because they're legit rich. They don't need the cash flow. Yeah, stock solm. Yeah, that 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 started like four years ago, and it's mostly my friends running it. The other co-founders, co I'm not really active in it that much. I do it mostly for them. If it, if they didn't want to do it, I would I I would have no problem shutting it down. It's mostly a distraction for me, but you know I kind of think it's a good value add.
<sighs> a sub service BRKA Hey, who's Johnson? He 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 thinks CLF goes to 180. Uh, he can be my best friend. Who's this Johnson guy? Uh, okay, let's see. There's some rockets. Uh, should market begin to extrapolate today's HRC prices into the future at mid-cycle EV EBITDA multiple of 5.0? I have no idea what any of that means. So does it mean the stock is going to go up? That guy must be worth hundreds. Look, if a Johnson guy thinks he's going to go up, it's going to go up. Let's go. Let's get to 180. 180. Tiger. Uh, yeah, but there's no setup here. Uh, come on, BB. BB the Beepily. BB the Beepily. Wait, what's Beely doing? This Beely looks really good on a weekly. It needs to break uh, this 115 area. Hopefully, it can go sideways a few more days. It's been built. This is the one. Uh, oh wait, where did this is the one that was long, like a couple of weeks ago, from this little bottom flag. It hit the 100 day and got rejected. Stopped me out. And honestly, I didn't follow the sell rules. The sell rules, you know, my stop should have been the lows of this day, right? The lows of entry day. It never hit that. I, I sold it on this day here. So I should kind of still be in it, but, you know, my bad. Square. Yeah, square is also kind of a bottom type of a flag. I like it how it undercut the 200 day, built higher lows. Bounced a little bit, f faded a little bit, and then found support on a 200 day again. It's, it's such a clean, you know, on the daily it doesn't look like much, but on the weekly, you know, if it starts breaking that 230 area, maybe 229, it probably needs to go sideways a few, little bit more. And Roku, I think, kind of looks similar. Looks great on a weekly. Like I got, I've been, you know, a lot of these former uh, leaders, like the software tech stocks, internet stocks, they they look like this. They kind of choppy on the daily, but you look at the weekly, and they're just one or two weeks away from, you know, doubling. So it, it's kind of exciting. I know I should follow the instructions on the screen. I don't. I. I. I'm not even familiar with my own sell rules. Fucking loser. Like I, I'm telling you, you can be a moron and make tens of millions, but you can't be a super moron. There's a difference. Never. Never be a super moron. You, you, you can have a little bit of margin of error. You can fuck things up. I fuck things up all the time. And I've still had really good returns over the years. That's the great thing about having a big edge. If you have no margin of error, 
in your trading, it means your edge is too small. That's why it's so important to really, you know, focus on the stocks that can make big moves because you have such small, uh, sorry, bigger margin of error. That's why like ADR, it's a guy, he's unfortunately, he's deceased now, but he, he used to be in investors live chat. He was Muddy is his name. Like that's where I got this concept from. He's like he 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 was he was a day trader. He, he only focused on his high ADR stocks and the, you know stuff like former runners. And now sometimes slow ADR stocks can make big moves. Uh, like uh, an example would be maybe like DFS for example, right? Uh, it's been a low ADR stock for the past like year now or yeah you know it's been sub 3 ADR or sub 4 ADR for the past 7-8 months but it's still you know doubled but it's not really a type of stock you want to trade and yesterday you want you know this is the top type of stock you want to be in if you have a less than a million dollar account you want this is the type of stock you want to trade something in double triple in a few days this is the type of stock you want to trade right uh, this is the type of stock that you want to trade you know a former runner something that has made a big move previously high ADR right BB2 high ADR former runner this is where the money is not trading something like, you know, and like yesterday I, I was talking with a guy, you know, he was like really bullish on now and I'm like, why trade this thing? This is, this is not a trading stock. He said, he was convinced it's kind of 550 plus. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. This, this company is probably going to double, triple over the next few years. It's a great business, but the stock is shit. This is a horrible trading stock. Horrible. It's all over the place. Look how choppy this thing is. ADR2. It's 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 mostly a waste of time. The the edge on a stock like this is very very small. You don't have a lot of margin of error on something like this. You're going to get chopped up trying to trade something like this. Core, uh, yeah, I know someone mentioned it down here. Yeah, it has a little bit of a, you know, IP mini IPO kind of a flag. I, uh, I, I don't know. I, I didn't really see it. It would be better if it flags now, goes sideways a few weeks. That would be something I would be interested in. Well, actually, not. It's too thin for me. But you know, it, it would be a setup I would like more. <laughs> There's many ways you can trade, many different types of setups. Well, actually, there's not that many different types of setups. There's just, there, there's only like a few, few types of setups. Range breaks, either upside, downside, mean reversion, you know, that's, it's, it's, it's very few basic types of setups. Even though all people have different types, types of names for them. I'm trying to think of, yeah, like dip, dip buying, like something like this, a setup like this. It, it could, in this case, it was also kind of a meaner version setup, but buying a dip in an uptrend, uh, you know, shorting, buying parabolics or overextensions, buying or shorting range expansions, or buying or selling in a channel. Like those are the, you know, types of trades you can do. 
we can do them on a daily, intraday, weekly. Yeah, like day trade, swing trade. And then you also have like the algo market maker type of trading. You sit on a bid and ask and you know trade the spreads and stuff like that. But that's an algo game. That you, you can't do that as a human anymore. It's too fast. All those people who did it, they're out of business. They lost their edge when the algos came. Yeah, high tight flags. If there was one setup I would trade, it would be high tight flags. Or maybe EP. I haven't, I don't know yet. Sometimes you get an EP when it breaks out of a high tight flag. So, like for example, B Lee. Oh, well, that, that wasn't the high tight flag, never mind. Or actually, it was on a weekly, it was. It broke out on earnings. It was an EP and a breakout in one. And Celsius also similar. Broke out of a high tight flag on a weekly on earnings. It was an earnings EP. You know, these types, th these are, you know, super, super explosive. High tight flag. Best of the best. Frequency of EP depends on your account size. I don't know, not sure. I I mostly focus on e on earnings related EPs. I kind of ignore the biotech and stuff like that. What's Novan doing? Uh, it's holding. It's below VWAP. Yeah, we'll see. This is the type. You know, it can go to thirty. Next week, or it could, you know, face back to 10 bucks. It's kind of hard to know. Is it legit news? Is it legit money buying this thing? Or is it just Wall Street bet people, you know, scalping this thing? And if it closes week, they're all going to bail out of it. Kind of hard to know. It would be easier if the market was worse because, you know, then you know there was, when in a market when there was not much speculation money, then you would know this is legit money buying it. <sighs> wow, float has uh, churned almost like, what, seven, eight times. Well, 22 employees for a micro cap stock, for a micro cap biotech, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. It's a micro cap stock. It's a, it's a tiny company. Doesn't mean anything. Raccoon is it down even more? Holy fuck. Now for day traders, like there could be a huge bounce coming. Like this thing could easily bounce 50%. So you know these things create a lot of opportunity for day traders. And it's very liquid too if you have a smaller account. HIMX Tight flag, uh, yeah, I need some more time. Semiconductor name. <laughs> Quick. 
icon ipdr ipdr ipdn Hmm. Oh, where is snap? Where is snap? Okay. I hope it. I hope it. You know, goes back to like uh, sixty ones or something. It goes sideways for a few more days. Build some more higher lows. Let's say twenty fifty catch up and gives us a setup next week. I don't want to. I hope it doesn't do something like SC where it just rebounds the same day, and then just you know starts grinding higher. Okay, fuck it. It's getting boring. I'm, I'm gonna do um, something productive, like catch the last sun, get some more tan. There's still almost 1100 people in here. Guys, don't you have anything better to do? Just kidding. <laughs> no? Yes, no, <laughs> uh, it's true, it's middle of trading day. Okay guys, thanks for joining. I hope you had a great week. If not, let's make next week awesome. Uh, have a great weekend and uh, take care.